Iran and the U.S. have a long and tangled political history, but one clear thread between them is the energy market. According to the U.S. Department of Energy, Iran is home to the world's third largest oil reserves, making it a critical supplier for the global market. Oil's played an important role in Iran's predating the 1979 revolution, and it continues to do so um, today. Experts say Iran's economy has always put energy front and center. The industry was nationalized in 1951, a move that factored into a U.S. and U.K.-supported coup two years later, as Western powers vied for a piece of the Middle East energy market. Facing pressure, the new Western-backed Shah agreed to give U.S., U.K. and French oil companies a major stake in the sector in 1954, setting up a critical partnership when Iran became a founding member of OPEC nearly five years later. But that alliance would soon unravel. The 1979 revolution saw Iran's pro-American Shah dethroned and established the Islamic Republic known today. It also resulted in a hostage crisis. 52 people were held for 444 days at the U.S. Embassy in Tehran. As the U.S. worked towards a resolution, one of its first actions was an embargo on Iranian oil. From that moment on, the U.S. has often looked towards economic deterrence to stifle Iran and its proxies with a focus on energy. It's been used as a tool for sanctions. There's a recognition that if you embargo or sanction Iranian oil, you're putting pressure on the regime, and there's certainly evidence of that. Under this deal, Iran has agreed that it will not stockpile the materials needed to build a weapon. Sanctions have often been aimed at deterring Iran's nuclear energy program. In 2015, the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, commonly known as the Nuclear Deal, imposed restraints on Iran's nuclear program in return for easing most sanctions. They have not lived up to the spirit of their agreement. President Trump ultimately pulled out of the agreement and reinstated sanctions in 2018. Talks to restart the plan under the Biden administration have mostly stalled amid unrest in Tehran. I don't think we need a wider war in the Middle East. That's not what I'm looking for. That brings us to today, where U.S. lawmakers are trying to find a path forward as tensions escalate in the region and around the world.